Hello, this is David Hilser, a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you're not buying exactly what mainstream physics and cosmology are selling, then this is the place for you. There are thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working for decades outside the mainstream, who have identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so be sure to click the subscribe button below along with the little bell, and you'll be alerted the next time we drop a video. Today is a real special treat. I happened to find this. I've seen it a number of years ago, but I, I sought it out again because this is a, an extremely rare example of where mainstream science journalism tries to uh, encounter and in a, in a more formal way the dissonant group and in fact in this case our dissonant group which was the NPA the Natural Philosophy Alliance which was founded by Dr. John Chappelle and we of course are the Chappelle um, Natural Philosophy Society or the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society or the CMPS and we uh, uh, consider him to be the modern, the father of modern dissident science. And he was very active in trying to get debates and encounters between mainstream science and dissidents. And this is a great example of that. He succeeded in getting the NPA to have meetings uh, in conjunction with the AAAS, and that is, of course, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And that it was an amazing feat. He actually did that in 1994, and then in 1995, they met in Norman, Oklahoma for the second time. And instead of me talking a whole lot about it, I'm just going to get into this article. You, can, you will be able to read this article online. It is online. I got this just literally today. So it's from the scientists exploring life inspiring innovation. The AAAS gives a dissident, gives dissident group a chance to challenge physics theory. In normal Oklahoma this this month, about two dozen speakers, I highlighted that because you can tell that's not a huge group. We're not a, always a huge group when we come together because we're all over the world, but it's always an amazing event. They came together and will gather to challenge the dominant paradigms of modern theoretical physics to discuss alternatives. Boy, this is all blasphemy. I'm, it's amazing they're writing this. At the annual meeting of the Southwestern Rocky Mountain Division, the swarm meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And this self -style, these self-styled dissonance are planning to renew their attack on special, relativity, special theory of relativity and Big Bang cosmology. Uh, and then it goes on. But uh, you notice that they were really uh, focused on those two things, special relativity and, and uh, of course, the Big Bang cosmology. And we're going to look at what exactly transpired, how this writer writes about it, uh, what the actual thoughts uh, were of both groups, from John Chappelle himself to mainstream scientists who, are, who were actually at the AAS, 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 AAAS. So let's take a look at what they, what they uh, wrote about the uh, dissonance. Critics of conventional physics, physics include consultants, engineers, mathematicians, historians of science, that was John uh, Chappelle, and an encyclopedia salesman, uh, but a few physicists. You notice right away they are trying to show that this is a bunch of ragtank people. These people are amateurs. Why would we ever want to lis uh, listen to them? You can already tell that they're setting up for that because they're going an encyclopedia salesman. You know, they oh, they're not all PhDs from Harvard, thank goodness, because that's not where science is going to go forward from Harvard, that's for sure. So uh, they claim that they cannot publish their ideas in mainstream journals and that the bias against them is so extreme that in essence, one cannot become a physicist if one criticizes the special theory of relativity absolutely true. I have a video on that. Go back to my videos, uh, search on uh, physics and university, and I will tell you why I would not be able to get in university as well, and that is an absolute truth. Uh, I'm sure that came from uh, the author's interviewing of John Chappelle and other people from uh, our group. Indeed, the one exception to the rule, a physics professor at the University of Connecticut did not reveal his skepticism of Albert Einstein's theory until after he had tenure. Yeah, I mean, this is really telling you the truth about how the ability and the way, the way that the universities teach, they don't teach. They tell you the truth. They don't allow for any dissonant opinion. They don't allow for students to challenge 
mainstream and that's that's just wrong 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 let's keep going here i love this this is an actual photo i believe um, if you see in the very upper top left hand corner you'll see those um, dark glasses from uh, the 60s and 70s those sort of uh, nasal nerdy looking glasses sowing seeds of dissonance an informal gathering of neo-newtonians um, that's bold smelled wrong at last year's aaas event division divisional meeting in san francisco and that's actually from 1994 but um, I do recognize some of those people in there um, for sure who some of them are still alive and still part of the group so that was really uh, nice to see a picture of the MPA there and then they're going to talk about John Chappelle I'm going to get down here because I these things are I took them directly from the screenshot so John Chappelle an un unemployed <laughs> historian of science <laughs> yes he did get his um, MA from Harvard and I believe he got his PhD from something like the University of Kansas or something like that. But of course, he's an unemployed hist. I mean, this is obviously a way to denigrate or downgrade or play down or to lower uh, John as a scientist just because of the way they said it. Unemployed. I mean, that's that's kind of uh, uncalled for, sort of politically incorrect. Maybe they wouldn't do that today, but uh, it's 1995 when they're writing it. Uh, and he cannot get an academic job because of his views, has emerged as a spokesman spokesman for the dissidents who have adopted the natural philo uh, uh, the name natural philosophy alliance of course natural philosophy is what we called physics before before we called it physics and that's the reason why we have kept that name and we're naturalphilosophy.org uh, speaking of mainstream the mainstream he comments this is John they don't know our objections because they don't listen they don't come to our meetings they don't read our journals when they reject our papers, they don't even bother to review them. That is absolutely true. This is something that we don't do anymore because it is a complete waste of time. Although our um, chief scientist, she will, uh, she has in fact published in some mainstream journals, um, sort of got around that. But again, it's not going to really change everybody's mind. I think that's one of the reasons. We'll talk about that later. But when we, again, he says, they reject our papers. They don't even bother to review them. They just look at the title and say, this is blasphemy. And of course, uh, here is a uh, picture of John. Um, and uh, I don't know if this was from that year or the year before, but they he basically says some great truth. And at least the journalist is putting it there. And I think that's uh, uh, great that they are doing this and juxtaposing it. But very much true. They don't know our object objections because they don't listen absolutely true absolutely true I won't even talk about exactly what they do because they write about it in this article and that's why I'm showing you this you won't find this anywhere else folks uh, gotta get myself over here the dissonance by large champion a theory of light popular before Einstein which has its roots in Newtonian mechanics oh very nice just like our particle theory it's completely Newtonian in a Newtonian paradigm the speed of light can vary Hmm. This is interesting. This is Dr. D oh, uh, Einstein's lost key. You know what the key to this book is by Dr. Alexander Unziker, one of my favorite people in science? A variable speed of light. Heavens forbid. They, they list this, of course, uh, as something that's uh, dissident. Anyways, most of the distance argue that uh, for the existence of an, of an ether a medium which light waves propagate or in our case particles uh, not propagation but the movement of particles just as water waves and um, waves move in water physicists say that ether, ether was disproved by the michelson morley ex experiment a century ago which did not detect any difference in travel time as it should have if there is an ether for two beams of light blah blah blah, blah. it talks about it many distances also argue for the steady state of that of course you know we have lots of arguments, lots of arguments why that experiment probably won't show anything uh, and why, of course. Um, let's keep going on. Um, the ASSS Southwestern Rocky Mountain Division Executive Director, Donald Dash, he was actually the one who approved it. I do remember his name. 
a geneticist at Colorado State University, says he chatted informally with other physicists about the dissidents' plans for the swarm meeting. They told him, he recalls, that it would not hurt for the group to be heard, despite being out of, out of the mainstream. In the long run, run, Nash maintains, bad science that tends not to win out. You notice I highlighted that. This is so ironic because guess what, folks? It's going to be, the tables will be turned when science finally catches up with getting past all these dogmas or what we call truths being shoved down our throats, all the problems, all the inherent paradoxes, all the bad assumptions that mainstream science has that in fact bad science tends not to win out but it's not the way they think it's going to be the other side and that is the the dissonant work will triumph eventually so that's pretty interesting but again uh, nash it's, it's it's really great to see that they really tried to to come together special relativity has been confirmed by experiments so many times that it borders on crackpot to say there is something wrong with it Experiments have, done, have been done to test special relativity explicitly. The world's particle accelerators would not work without special, uh, if special relativity wasn't in effect. The global positioning system, which uses satellites to help determine the location of the Earth or anything else, uh, or anything possessing a trans, uh, special transmitter, would not work if special relativity didn't work the way we thought it did. Now this is really interesting if you really are a dissonant person and you're up on all this. First of all, of course, special relativity um, and uh, saying that it's in use in, it, it's used in particle accelerators. Dr. Karazani's work, of course, shows that it uh, doesn't have to be the case. In fact, you can simplify uh, the relativity equations and come up with more Newtonian ones as he did, eliminating uh, the two frames, which was proof for this. And then what, what's a, the upshot of that is the neutrino was there to save special relativity. You throw out the neutrino, which was invented to save a special relativity that was um, uh, given to us by Mr. Albert Einstein. If you take away the neutrino and then you change to the autodynamic equations of Karazani, which are Newtonian, you can do nucleus-nucleus collision in particle accelerators much simplified. And of course, the rule in science is if you can simplify it, you win. So of course, we know that. Again, I have uh, uh, videos on that. You can take a look at them. And of course, the global pos positioning system, Ron Hatch, Ron Hatch, Ron Hatch. Ron Hatch has over 30 patents, and he has written much about that. Let's go see my movie, EinsteinWrong.com, and you'll see him in that movie. And he talks about how Actually, GPS shows the flaws in relativity. It doesn't support it. In fact, the people who cry out up, uh, among the mountaintops to the rest of the world that GPS is, doesn't work without relativity are the theoreticians, the GPS people actually behind everyone's back actually know and admit that it does. they do not use relativity in their calculations. This is something known, but they don't want to say it because they don't want to rock the boat and they don't care because their algorithms are proprietary and they make lots, billions of dollars off of this, so they're not going to say. So we know all this kind of stuff. So, uh, But the interesting here thing is, is that they said uh, that uh, it's been confirmed so many times that it's borders on crackpot to say there's something wrong with it and that it's been ex te tested explicitly. But of course, again, if you follow us and the work of our group, you will know that this is, if you take the time to study special relativity. In fact, that is my number one video. It's got over 4,000 views in less than a year. Why? Because people want to know about that, and I talk ex extensively. So go to my, my uh, the YouTube and look directly for that. Uh, number one video of mine. And here we have Mr. What, what, uh, Arrogance Incarnate. Uh, it's all relative. <laughs> You know, it's, it's a journalist trying to be cute. Physicist Clifford Will says that dissonants are snubbed, that is, they're, they're uh, brushed aside because they are wrong. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, of course, if you're in debate class, if anybody who you know how to debate, that is not any point in debate. In fact, that's just a positional statement. And, you know, of course, they do try to talk about in this article about uh, we try to knock things down. It's like a, a five headed dragon and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, I won't get into that. I want you to read that article yourself because there's a lot of things in, into it. 
uh, that are interesting. I'm just trying to hit some highlights that were interesting to me. And this is more interesting. I'm trying to highlight maybe some of the more positive points is there are fools mixed in, meaning our group, Epstein says of the dissidents, but by and large, they are not fools. They can make arguments against relativity that can tie up typical college f physics teachers in knots. Think about that. That's a pretty uh, amazing statement. So, I mean, at least Mr. Epstein is, uh, is, is acknowledging that, no, they don't sound like fools when you go and you, and that was one of the things with my mom in the movie. If you asked her, she said, no, these people are some of the brightest people I know uh, I've ever uh, come across. So, yeah. And I think it's also interesting, it says, tie up typical college professor physics teachers in knots. Well, why is that? Oh, it, it, their their contention is they get tied in knots because we tie knots that are are all wrong and we have it takes them a while to undo them. Um, but the the case is is they never really look at it. They claim to look at it, but they don't, as John says. So despite his criticisms, I, I Epstein has a certain respect for many of the dissidents. They have their heart in the in the right place. He says, in some ways, more than a typical college professor. These, the, these people are genu generally in love with physics. Their heart has led them astray. And this is very common um, in the, um, where is it? I can't find it in the uh, thing of physics. The, um, I don't see it right off my hand and I'm sorry about that. But in the Physics on the Fringe, that book, which is actually a pretty good book, uh, Margaret Wortham says the same thing, that these people like, that we dissidents like science uh, quite a lot, but we're just led astray. We make our little um, models because we can't understand the huge complexities of the universe. And so we all get, you know, like we're kids, and instead of building a real world, we go build our Lego world and universe, and uh, that suffices. So that, in, in, in a, a sense, is that it's patronizing basically patronizing is when you want to say oh you're okay but you're all screwed up so anyways um, lastly here uh, this is the conclusion of the article again I'm not going to get into uh, the entire article so there are some interesting parts I did not cover uh, that talk about how the they try to knock down the uh, heads of uh, the dragons, etc. But this is the end here. Several mainstream physicists interviewed by The Scientist, which is this magazine, include some friendly with individual dissidents, comment that there is little of there is little of substance to the dissidents' criticisms. Aldrich Nash and other non physicists involved with the AAAS meetings apparently think that the dissidents are operating at the fringe fringes of physics, where ideas might be unpopular but worth hearing. As Aldrich puts it, it's interesting to see who goes to their sessions. Often it's graduate students who want to see what's happening at the margins. The physics community, meanwhile, locates the dissidents not at the fringes, but light years away. And this this is absolutely true. These uh, This uh, whole content, this idea that the way I want to conclude this this talk today and this article is a couple of things. Number one, in the article they do try to they talk about them trying to correct the dissidents and find those problems. They said, well, it's like a, a, a seven-headed dragon. Every time one he, the one guy, they literally say in the article, well, uh, they have one theory. Some people have more than one theory, and then if you cut down one theory, then another one come. They come and give you another one, and they keep coming back with theories. Well, they are, they keep improving. You know, we dissidents completely come always are trying to improve our models, uh, but that's the one of the things. So, but the the real the real 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 thing here uh, that we really want to say is this, and John Chappelle said it most, and that they don't know our objections because they don't listen. That's the thing. And the question I and, and like I said to conclude this, the thing I want to leave with you guys is I have over over two decades since 1996 that's now 22 years I've been involved with the MPA I've been involved in dissident physics longer than that because of my work with Dr. my uh, tutelage under Dr. R Ricardo Carazzani and I have come to the conclusion that trying to change 
mainstream or trying for us to get together and have debates doesn't work. And in fact, I'm going to talk to, I'm going to do a talk on something I heard on the radio, which is really interesting, and that is why these debates will not work because of the way they are, they are done, that people defend their sides. But I'll talk more about that. But in, in the big conclusion that I have is John's absolutely right. They don't listen when you bring, you even in a debate, you tell them something very technical and then they just laugh and then they go back to defending what's right or just saying this is wrong because this is right. That's another argument they'll make. He says, well, what do you mean that Dr. Karazani says that as you go faster, mask decreases? That's completely, that's just, they just trying to do something different. No, mass, to, for anything, any mass amongst, uh, for itself to move, of course, has to get rid of mass. So for it to move, it's got to shoot off mass to make itself move. And that's what Karazani says. And those kinds of arguments, when people make these arguments, is they just, they don't listen. They don't listen to what the, and they don't really examine the objections of the dissidents. They don't look at the papers. They don't really think, okay, well, well tell me about it. Tell me why you think fundamentally we're, we're all wrong. They don't sit and listen. What they do is they immediately say, how can I save you? How can I save these people? They're wonderful people. They're even smart people, but they, their hearts have led them astray, as they said in that conclusion. But I think it's just really fascinating to read this. I really encourage you to click below and read the entire article. You're gonna get a really good sense of what often happens. What happens in the 1980s and 90s when the dissidents tried to get together with the mainstream. I think it's a lot different today because I think that we are making head roads because especially in the last two or three or four years, the idea of critical thinking has gone uh, viral, not only politically, but actually scientifically. And I think people are much more open to saying, yeah, these are problems. And I think that's why this channel can continues to grow. I'm getting three or four subscribers a day and it continues, it's growing like this. And the reason I think that's happening is not because I'm such a wonderful guy, it's because of what we're saying. Like I said in our movie, uh, don't listen to me, listen to what I say, and that's why you're here, we're li to listen to what we dissidents who have spent many decades outside the mainstream say about all this stuff, and I believe that we are in the silent majority, that all this, the mainstream physics has gone so far awry that yes, and as that one guy said, the best physics will eventually win out. And guess what? That's going to be the dissonance stuff. And all these things like relativity, the Big Bang, particle physics as we know it today, plate tectonics even, all of those things will go by the way, wayside and better and much uh, simpler models will be in their place. And remember, don't take what my word for it or anybody else's on faith. Stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave D. Hilster, your science therapist, talking way too much today. <laughs> Ciao for now.